Hey guys, this is Austin with Sabertooth Solutions. I'm here today at Indy Aerospace in Indianapolis, Indiana to show you how to properly set up a saw blade on an arbor and check it for run out in a milling machine like this Haas VF2. So before we get too far into how to properly set these blades up, I want to take a brief moment to go over a little bit of saw blade geometry and how not all saw blades are created equal. We have two different blades here from Controx. Uh, both of them are high speed steel cobalt, both of them are the same diameter, and both of them are the same width. Where they differ is on their tooth profiles. So this first blade features our tooth form A. And what that means is it has a five degree positive rake angle, it features 160 teeth, and you'll notice that these teeth are fairly shallow. The second blade we have here is our tooth form B. Now you'll notice that tooth is much deeper, it features a different chip gullet design, uh, and it also features a 15 degree positive rake angle. You might also notice there are only 80 teeth on this blade as opposed to 160. So why is all of that important? Well, each blade does extremely well in different types of applications. Our first blade here with tooth form A is most ideally suited for harder or tougher materials, think along the lines of tool steels. It also is more ideally suited for your shallower slots. Now, the reason being for that is we have more teeth than we have shallower teeth. So one of the most important things in properly specking in a saw blade and setting up our operation is to make sure that we have the proper number of teeth engaged in the cut at one time. With this blade, uh, if you were to try and make a deeper cut, you're gonna have a lot more teeth engaged in the cut at the same time. So the number of teeth can vary depending on application, but ideally we want around three teeth in the cut at a given time. Now, if you have too few teeth in the cut, your blade is gonna be susceptible to chatter. If you have too many teeth in the cut, we're gonna have very high cutting forces and torque, which can cause just a whole mess of problems, anywhere from the blade spinning in the arbor to spindles stalling out to just poor cut quality in general. Our second blade here is more ideally suited for your more free cutting materials. Think along the lines of low carbon steel or aluminum, uh, softer, easier to cut materials that might be a little bit more long chipping and free cutting. It's also ideally suited for deeper cuts. So if we pay attention to our tooth uh, count engaged in the cut at one given time, having 80 teeth versus 160, it's much easier to try and maintain our around three teeth in the cut at a given time with this blade. Now as you can imagine, since we're at an aerospace shop, we're really probably going to be using this blade for most of our applications in aluminum, titanium, and softer, more free cutting materials. So now that we got that info out of the way, let's get to it. The first step that we're going to want to make sure that we take is to properly clean all of the components in our assembly. I like to use just some alcohol, uh, and so always when you're working with harsher chemicals like this, good idea to use some gloves. So I spray down each component of the system and just get them cleaned up. Also verify that none of these components have any damage, any nicks, dings, things of that nature. We really want to ensure that all of the mating surfaces are getting cleaned as much as possible. So as you can see, the tool holder had a little bit of dirt in there, nothing too crazy, but we just want to make sure that that dirt doesn't introduce any unnecessary run out. Now since our arbor and saw blade are brand new, 
Uh, both of these have a rust proof coating on them and we'll want to make sure that we use some extra alcohol to get all that dissolved. And again, what we're the most concerned about are our mating surfaces. And we want to, of course, make sure that our saw blade is clean as well. And then lastly, since I used uh, just normal paper towels, we want to make sure that we blow all these components off. This just ensures that we don't have any lint in our assembly. As we're assembling our components, I'm a big fan of just rubbing down each of those surfaces to make sure we don't have any lint or dust. Uh, your hand will catch that kind of stuff. So we've assembled our ER collet holder. We'll then go on to our arbor. quickly just go tighten this down. You'll want to torque this collet down to whatever the recommended torque spec is from your manufacturer of your holder. Uh, I'm normally not a huge fan of ER collet holders for this type of an application. I like hydraulic much more, but this is what we have available for this process, and it'll work just fine. All right, so now that we have our arbor loaded into our holder, the next step we're gonna take is loading our saw blade onto the arbor. Again, we wanna wipe each of these surfaces down by hand, just to ensure there's no dust or debris on them. We'll wanna pay close attention to make sure that we have our teeth facing in the correct direction. And the direction you're gonna want those teeth in is such that if the saw blade were to slip, it would cause the screw to tighten. So lefty loosey, righty tighty on this particular harbor, though your case may be different. We'll get this threaded almost all the way down. Then we'll back it off just a hair. And what we wanna do is ring that saw blade in. So we'll rock it back and forth, just making sure it's not catching on anything that could introduce some unwanted run out. Once we're satisfied with that, we're gonna tighten this down. Now this doesn't need to be excessive. Just hand tight is good, or as my friends in Germany would say, guten tight. All right, we're ready to go, and let's go get this loaded up into the machine. All right, home stretch, we're almost there. So the last thing we're gonna do before we load this in the spindle is I always like to just run my finger over the taper of the spindle, just ensuring there's no dirt or debris or damage there. I didn't feel any nicks, but there was a little bit of dirt in there. So good thing we did that. 
We're gonna always pay attention as well to the other positions in the carousel nearby this tool and ensure that it's not going to collide with those tools. So we've got some narrow tools next door uh, where I'm not worried about it colliding there, but let's just say we wanted to put this next to our face mill, for example, or a shell mill, we could potentially run into issues with the two large diameter tools next to each other. So we're all loaded up and ready to go, and what we need to do now is check this tool for run out. So we're gonna be checking this blade for run out in two different directions. The first will be axially, so that's up and down this way. And we can check either on the bottom surface or the top surface. I'm checking it on the bottom surface just for ease of how our indicator is set up here. We wanna make sure that we're checking this very near the outside of the tool as that's where the run out is going to be the worst. So we'll jog this down in Z until we're zeroed out on that indicator. Okay, so we're comfortably at zero there. And we're just gonna walk this blade around so we've got about two, three, five, four. Okay, so we've got about four, five. About two in that direction. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and zero this out on that side. Okay, so we're zeroed out there. Now as we go around, We always want to make sure that we go in one direction when we're checking this as well. So the absolute worst spot on this, we're at about nine and a half micron. So just under four ten thousandths of an inch. Uh, typically on this dimension, we want to see something similar to that max, about maybe five ten thousandths of an inch is acceptable. So we're within acceptable range. And the next dimension that we're gonna be checking is our tooth to tooth or radial run out. So what we're doing here is we've got this lined up in the center of the teeth here. Uh, I'd like to start with a logo or if there's not a logo on your saw blade, you can always take a Sharpie and mark on there for a reference point. But we're gonna go around the blade. We're gonna zero it out here. We're gonna go around the blade. We'll find the minimum and the maximum and we will subtract them from each other to find out how much run out we have from tooth to tooth on this blade or how much radial run out we have. Okay, we're zeroed out here. This can be tough to measure, particularly on thin saw blades. We also have a lot of teeth on these blades. So this can be kind of time consuming, but it is very important, particularly if you're trying to make cuts with tight diameters. And this also will greatly influence your tool life. So we'll take that the time to do it. So tooth to tooth here, we had eight micron on the high side and we had about negative two micron on the low side for a total of 10 micron of run out, which equals to about four ten thousandths of an inch of run out. So again, we're in really good shape here. Depending on the diameter of your blade, anywhere from about one to two, maybe even three thousandths on the high end can be acceptable for this dimension. Again, relative to how tight of a tolerance you're trying to hold, and how small that blade is. But here we had a really good setup. We were clean, we were very diligent with how we set these tools up, and therefore we got a great result on our first try here. Now if for whatever reason we did find that our run out was not satisfactory on the first shot, the first thing I would do before I got too crazy 
is I would take that saw blade out, I would reload my tool holder in, and I would be checking the arbor's inside bore to find out if the runout is between my tool holder and my arbor, or whether it is actually between my saw blade and my arbor. If in fact you do find that your arbor has the run out, you then know that you need to either check the arbor for damage or find out if your holder may have been the culprit. Uh, and then beyond that, you may even want to check your spindle run out as well. I want to thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this video brought you value and I hope that you saw how to set up your saw correctly. No pun intended. Uh, I really want to give a huge shout out to Controx for providing these saw blades so I can show you guys how to do this, as well as Indie Aerospace for allowing me to utilize their facility. Uh, great group of people. If you have any needs relating to composite or metal parts or assemblies manufacturing, definitely hit them up. They're in Indianapolis, Indiana. You can reach the owner Joe at joe at indie-aerospace.us. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Let's slap that red button, call her a day.